Hello, I'm Malcolm. Welcome to edition 2017 of the Enfield Talking newspaper. With me on the reading team for Thursday the 10th of September 2015 are Elizabeth, Roz and newcomer Caroline with Jason on the controls. And the items we'll be reading are copyright of our local newspapers, the Enfield Gazette and Advertiser and the Enfield Independent. This week's local stories include MP says that the UK must do more for refugees, a judge blasts building firm over an accident which cost a teenager his life, and jail for people smugglers who held immigrants hostage in a flat. And we're rather alarmed to know that there's an infestation of cockroaches at the Civic Centre. We're never very far from them, are we? But before we go to the papers, we've got one or two reminders and special announcements. And here's Caroline. I'm sure you know by now that you have a listener's representative, Diane de Jersey, who'll be happy to help you with any problems or concerns you have about your talking newspaper. You can call Diane on 0208 805 6578. That's 0208 805 6578. Ros, tell us about Sonata. Will do. Enfield Talking Newspaper is now available on Sonata. Sonata is an internet radio service developed by the British Wireless for the Blind Fund, specially for use by blind and partially sighted people. Sonata devices are available to buy from the British Wireless for the Blind Fund and require a broadband connection. Listeners who are registered blind or pers- who are partially sighted are UK residents and in receipt of means test benefits qualify for a Sonata device on free loan. This means if you receive pension credit, a tenants allowance or a carer's allowance, you may qualify for a Sonata device on free loan. For more information, please telephone the British Wireless for the Blind Fund on 01622 747 757. That's 01622 747 757. Thank you. And now here's me with the first news item. Humanity and compassion should propel the UK to do more to help desperate Syrian refugees, an MP has insisted. While its government has been criticised for its stance on the crisis, the Conservative MP for Enfield Southgate, David Burroughs, says more could be done. It shouldn't take a desperate picture of a lost life to spur us into action, Mr Burroughs told the advertiser, referring to the photo of Syrian boy Elan Kurdi lying dead on a Turkish beach. We can do more by providing refuge to the thousands of migrants fleeing to Europe, he said. I think everyone who has seen the news is concerned. My role is to spur the government into action. The UK is currently getting in the region of 200 refugees. We must be able to up that. We have a moral duty to do more. Mr Burroughs entered the debate on Wednesday last week by posting a tweet which read, at the very least we should accept 1% of refugees because we accept more than 1% responsibility. The MP, who is Vice Chairman of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Refugees and who has been involved in an inquiry into the treatment of refugees in the UK, supported the upping of the UK's quota of Syrian refugees by 100 back in June. He said he'd emphasised at the time that the increase was insufficient and he didn't want to be in that situation again, knowing we should have done more. The father of six has received much correspondence from constituents on the issue. The majority are supportive of my stance on this, he said, and there are people who aren't always supportive of me from across the political spectrum. Some have got in touch to say we should have more control of our borders. I believe we should have more control of the situation, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't also act with more compassion. Prime Minister David Cameron announced on Monday that the UK will accept up to 20,000 refugees from Syria over the next five years. And now here's Elizabeth. The building company has been fined more than £300,000 for health and safety breaches, which led to the death of teenage apprentice Alfie Perrin. Judge Martin Zeidman QC said rooftop rooms had failed miserably in their duty of care. Alfie, 16, from Enfield, fell to his death in November 2012 from scaffolding on a construction site in Camden Road, Wanstead, East London, while working for the loft conversion company based in Baker Street, Enfield. In March this year, 
Carpenter Andrew Roy, Alfie's supervisor on the day of his fall, was cleared of manslaughter. Rooftop Rooms was due to stand trial alongside Mr Roy for its role in Alfie's death, but pleaded guilty at the last minute to health and safety breaches on the site. However, the company insisted the breaches in health and safety code did not cause the teenager's death and a Newton hearing was called for the judge to rule on whether they were in fact a factor. On Friday, at the end of a three-day hearing, the judge ruled that, to put it simply, if the rules had been followed, Alfie Perrin would not have been killed, adding the site was an accident waiting to happen. The apprentices were young people, almost children, who needed to be treated with extra care. Rooftop roofs failed miserably in their duty of care. He handed the company a fine of £325,000. Earlier in the hearing, the judge had heard from Health and Safety Executive Inspector Eileen Gascoigne, who listed a catalogue of failings at the site where the accident occurred, including a dangerous scaffolding platform three floors up, without a barrier or warning sign, and the practice of bombing rubbish from the roof, meaning a means of getting rid of material which involves tossing bags of waste and rubble into a skip from the scaffolding. In the course of the hearing, the company said it was unaware that bombing was taking place. The judge said this statement beggared belief. He pointed out that the site should have been inspected in the last days before the accident. The fact that rooftop rooms denied any negligence meant the case had dragged on longer than it should have done he said, adding to the suffering of Alfie's family. Defence lawyer Andrew McGee conveyed the sincere condolences of the company to the family. He said that since the accident had been introduced, it had introduced gold standard safety measures on all its sites. Speaking outside court after the ruling had been handed down, Alfie's parents Mark and Jackie Perrin expressed their relief that their ordeal of getting justice for their son was finally over. Mr Perrin said, it's gone as good as it could have done. With the fine that was imposed, I hope it makes people take notice and look into how they treat apprentices. Mrs Perrin said, this whole thing has been a nightmare. The case could have ended in March and we will never stop missing Alfie. Seven men, including two from Edmonton, have been jailed for their role in a people smuggling operation which saw a group of Indians held hostage in a flat in the borough. Major Bajwa, 44, and Kuldeep Singh, 37, both Indian nationals living in the UK, arranged for seven of their criminal associates to smuggle a number of fellow Indian nationals into the country. Among these seven were Soren Razul, 29, of Plowman Close, Edmonton, and Bijar Shaker, 27, who lived at the same address. The others were Barzan Kamal, 28, from Cardiff, Karzan Rasul, 24, from Essex, Burhan Abdul Shekhani, 29, of Felton, Middlesex, Liakat Jabakel, 23, an Afghanistan national, and Fami Hakim, 32, from Hillingdon, West London. The plan was that each of the immigrants would pay £10,000 to agents in India and would then pay another £10,000 on arrival in the UK. It was planned that the smuggled people would be handed to Bajwa and Singh when they arrived in the UK. Instead, Kamal and the six others imprisoned the victims in the flat in Plowman Close. The gang then demanded more money from Bajwa and Singh. However, their plan was foiled when police received a call on November the 5th last year claiming a number of people were being held captive at an address in Edmonton and would not be released unless a ransom of £10,000 was paid for each victim. The Mets Trafficking and Kidnap Unit launched an operation to locate and rescue the victims, quickly uncovering that members of the criminal gang had fallen out with each other. It transpired that Bajwa had coerced a relative into calling police in a bid to have his co-conspirators arrested, but it was quickly established that Bajwa was behind the call and he was subsequently arrested. An investigation by the Trafficking and Kidnap Unit resulted in the other members of the gang being arrested. More than £80,000 in cash was also seized during the course of the investigation. The victims were referred to the Home Office. 
On Friday, six people were sentenced for conspiracy to facilitate a breach of immigration law, possession of criminal property and five counts of false imprisonment. Shakani, Rasul, Shaker and Jabakel were each jailed for 12 years. Hakim was sentenced to 11 years in prison and Singh was jailed for 11 years. Rasul was sentenced to 12 years on the same charges at the same court yesterday. Bajwa is scheduled to be sentenced for conspiracy to facilitate a breach of immigration law at Southwark Crown Court on October the 6th. A warrant for Kamal's arrest was issued after he absconded while the jury considered their verdict against him. He was found guilty of conspiracy to facilitate a breach of immigration law, possession of criminal property and five counts of false imprisonment and was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment in his absence. Investigating officer, Detective Constable Kieran Backhouse of the Trafficking and Kidnap Unit said, I'm very pleased with the sentencing, which sends out a strong message that people smugglers face the full might of the law and can expect substantial jail terms. I urge anyone with information about the whereabouts of Kamal to call the Trafficking and Kidnap Unit on 0207 230 8952 or call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 Workers at Enfield Council have been left outraged after cockroaches, cockroaches infested a part of the Civic Centre. Those working at the Council headquarters in Silver Street have been left stunned after part of the building was left infested with the insects. One council worker who chose to remain anonymous stated the infestation was in B Block in the north part of the centre, which is home to departments such as trading standards, safety and environment. He said the place has been crawling with them and it's not acceptable. Complaints were made at the end of last month and there are still problems now. This makes working conditions a problem and I did not think the Environment Agency would be this close to nature. Another said, I just hope the infestation has not spread to anywhere else in the building and especially not to the second floor where the food is prepared. It's an embarrassment and must be put right. Enfield Council would not confirm how big the problem was but describe the infestation as a small number of pests yet say the issue will take a matter of days to eradicate. A spokesman said, a number of cockroaches have been spotted in the Civic Centre. Pest control took immediate steps to identify and eradicate the small number of pests which have been spotted and this process is expected to be completed in a matter of days. I see. Three men laced up their walking boots and raised thousands of pounds for charity with a gruelling 24-hour hike through Hertfordshire and beyond. Earlier in the year, the advertiser reported that three friends were determined to raise money for children's charities by walking 100 kilometres from London to Cambridge. Tim Cunningham, 41, of Church Road, Ponders End, who works at AW Electrical Suppliers in Great Cambridge Road, Enfield, the company's director, Anthony Oliveri, 31, and David Percival of DAP Electrical in Hoddesdon, a customer of AW Electrical, spoke at the beginning of the summer of their tough training regime in preparation for their hike from Hackney to Cambridge. The trio set out in the early morning of August the 28th from Hackney Marshes, aiming to set a pace of 10 minutes per kilometre. Each man had a chosen charity he wanted to raise £1,000 for, Leukaemia Care and Make-A-Wish Foundation and Diabetes UK. The trio trekked alongside the River Lee to the village of Brohing on the River Quinn with a brief stop to eat at the halfway mark before marching on to Cambridge all within their target time. This was not the first time Tim had braved blisters for charity. Last summer, he led a team of eight colleagues and customers on a 100-kilometre trek up the banks of the River Thames from Putney Bridge to Henley, again raising funds for good causes. This walk was extremely hard, said Tim. This is the second time I've done it. I'd like to say I'll never do it again, but I probably will. But the last ten kilometres were hell on earth. Anthony also found the going pretty hard. I'm feeling fine now. But there are a couple of us who will be expecting to lose our toenails soon, he said. In spite of the hardship, the hikers are proud that they were able to raise £3,000 in total for their charities, with some funds still coming in. 
It was a car enthusiast dream on Sunday as hundreds of heritage, vintage and classic vehicles cruised into the grounds at <coughs> excuse me, Capel Manor in Ballsmore Lane, Enfield. The oldest of the 800 vehicles on display at the annual car show was a 1912 fire engine loaned by White Webb's Museum in White Webb's Road, Enfield. Also appearing were a few vintage models, many post-war heritage cars and some glossy classics dating back to the 1970s. Hundreds of visitors enjoyed displays from motoring legends Ford, Bentley and Rolls-Royce. The day was sponsored by David Burroughs Electrical Limited of Enfield. The company spokesman said it was a fantastic event, very well attended. There were some brilliant cars. One of the highlights of the day was the Dakota Flypast. Many of the cars at the show were the same age as the veteran aircraft and, like it, are in tip-top condition. Calls have been made for ideas to help save a historic Grade 2 stately home. Broomfield House in Palmer's Green was built in the 16th century but has been badly damaged following a series of fires in the 1980s and 1990s. Enfield Council is now asking people to put forward their ideas about the future of the site ahead of a second consultation at the start of next year. Architects have been commissioned to come up with some viable options for the future of the house in Broomfield Park. However, the rebuild is set to cost millions and the local authority is hoping to work with Historic England, the Heritage Lottery Fund, the Broomfield House Trust and Friends of Broomfield Park to find viable ways of financing any renovations. Residents and others can take part in the initial consultation, which runs until November 30, 2015 at www.enfield.gov.uk forward slash Broomfield underscore consultation or give their views at the Palmer's Green Festival on September the 6th. Councillor Daniel Anderson, Enfield's Council Cabinet Member for the Environment, said, We need to make a decision about the future of Brimfield House. The building's in a terrible state and we desperately need to resolve its future once and for all. This is therefore a final opportunity for residents and other interested parties to shape the future of this historic site. A special needs school has given its pupils an innovative way of learning as they return to school. Durant School in Pitfield Way, Enfield, have installed an interactive giant touchscreen on the floor to help students with their numeracy, literacy, cognitive and social skills. Aimed at children aged 3 to 18, the system, known as WiseFloor, allows pupils to use their arms, legs and feet to learn. Durant's head teacher, Peter De Rosa, said, In a relatively short period of time, the wise floor has been a huge success. The games support communication and motor skills, as well as social interaction with peers. It allows pupils to play simple and effective activities, as well as designing their own games and quizzes. Students are motivated and actively participate in the sessions. They have had the opportunity to utilise their skills or turn-taking and working as a team as well. The WISE floor has great curriculum links and we look forward to using these on a more regular basis. But best of all, the WISE floor is fun. The product was developed by Alexandra Institute in Denmark and Durance is the first in the borough to install the system. Thousands descended on Broomfield Park over the weekend to enjoy a range of fun and festivities. More than 7,000 people poured into the park in Alderman's Hill on Sunday to visit the fourth annual Palmer's Green Festival. There were more than 100 stalls offering everything from children's games to a special friendship zone for older residents. The ever-popular dance field presented by Salsatricity provided an opportunity to learn salsa, tango and more. Two music stages promoted by Lester Clayton and Club Fabulous kept everyone dancing in the sunshine to acoustic rock, rap, hip-hop, blues, folk and reggae. The festival was sponsored by Winkweather State Agents. Festival founder and producer Philip Chard said, My team and I are proud to be organising such an event. The numbers have increased over the years. We reckon our success is down to providing something for everyone and a chance for people of different ages, cultures and backgrounds to meet socially and, most importantly, have an enjoyable day out together.
he added that there was a question mark over whether the festival would return next year because it had become so big that there, and there were currently only six organisers. So anyone who'd like to get involved in organising the festival can log on to www.palmersgreen. Sorry, Palmer's Green Festival, that's all one word. So that's www.palmersgreenfestival, all one word, dot org, dot uk. The fraudster caught selling fake goods online has been fined tens of thousands of pounds. Atif Khan of Lockmere Muse Enfield Lock pleaded guilty to 15 Trademarks Act offences at Wood Green Crown Court last week after he'd been caught by Enfield Council selling fake goods on the Asset World website. <clears throat> he was fined £90,000 and ordered to pay £35,000 to the council in costs. He was also given a 12-month sentence suspended for two years and ordered to carry out 200 hours of unpaid work. The council's trade, trading standards team searched Khan's home where he based his online business and found hundreds of counterfeit fitness products, educational DVDs and bras, all of which were seized along with documents and computers. Officers also confiscated goods held for Khan, at, Khan 34, at warehouses in Leicester and Milton Keynes. Evidence showed that his accounts had been suspended on websites due to supplying fake goods. The UK border agency had also written to him about counterfeit goods supplied from China. Daniel Anderson, the cabinet member for the environment, said, I'm delighted that through officers' painstaking efforts, Enfield Council has led a successful prosecution and brought a prolific internet fraudster to book. However, I'd strongly advise the public to take great care when buying online, as the net is awash with fake goods. Nonetheless, Mr Khan's prosecution has helped prevent thousands of counterfeit goods from flooding the market. A day of activities to raise funds for refugees will take place this week, starting at 11am on Friday in Karen's Kitchen in St Luke's Church, Phipps Hatch Lane, Enfield. There'll be a raft of activities for parents and preschool children, including arts and crafts, face painting and massage. In the afternoon and into the evening, there'll be activities for older children and adults, as well as music, food and drink, a tabletop sale and a raffle. Organiser Karen Nash said... We're hoping that as many people come as possible. If you can play an instrument, read a story, bake a cake, donate food or donate good quality items to sell, please do get in touch. Karen's also appealing for donations of wine for the evening event and would love anyone who wants to volunteer to get in touch. All funds raised from the day are going to the Migrant Offshore Aid Station, which runs an expedition festival and a team of rescuers and paramedics working in the Mediterranean, searching for refugees coming from North Africa. So far, the charity has saved 11,124 lives. Karen added, I've been worrying about the refugee crisis for some months now. I don't have a lot of money, but together we can make a difference. Anyone who'd like to get involved can call Karen on 07818 405 501 or contact her through the cafe's Facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash Karen's Kitchen at St Luke's. A church youth club might not seem like the most romantic venue in the capital, but for one couple sparks flew when the club treasurer met the newest recruit. Wynne and George Robinson, both 82, of Monks Road Enfield met in 1949 at St Philip's Youth Club in Tottenham when George was the treasurer and Wynne was just a newcomer. After a five-year courtship, the couple got married on September the 17th, 1955 and 60 years later, they are set to celebrate their diamond wedding anniversary surrounded by friends and family. In the first years of marriage, George was posted overseas as he carried out his national service duty as a ground wireless mechanic in the RAF. One posting took him to Northern Ireland, and on his return to Civvy Street, George went into banking and the Robinsons moved from Tottenham to Enfield in 1962, and they've lived there in Monks Road ever since. The couple have two daughters, 
and Wynne stayed at home when they were little, but when they got older, she set up her own accountancy business, which she went on to run for ten years. The girls are now married, now have their own families, and George and Wynne have four grandchildren, aged from 16 to 23. The couple told the advertiser that the whole family was very close, and this particular anniversary would involve more than one big celebration, with a lunch next week planned for 27 guests. Wynne and George have been very happy together since their wedding day back in 1955 and both said their one word of advice for a happy marriage would be tolerance. George said, you need to be tolerant and accept the other person. And Wynne added, love and understanding were also crucial. The Gannett Foundation is looking for projects to support the charitable arm of NewsQuest Media Group, which publishes the Times and Independent series, is offering grants to projects in areas where NewsQuest operates. The Foundation values projects that bring lasting benefits to the communities and neighbourhoods served by our newspapers. That includes schemes for neighbourhood improvement and local problem solving, economic development, youth development, education and cultural creativity, help for the disadvantaged or disabled, and environmental conservation. Typically, our grants are made for substantial projects that require and merit awards of between £5,000 and £10,000. Last year, De Melzer Hospice in Eltham received a £9,353 grant from Magic Carpet, an interactive projection system that allows a child to play and interact with any form of scenery or shapes displayed on the floor. The hospice cares for children from across South London who have life-threatening or life-limiting conditions. <clears throat> Applicants must be registered charities and must not have received Canet funding in the past two years. We will not fund salaries, professional fees, <coughs> Pardon me. We will not fund salaries, professional fees or running or maintenance costs, general appeals, projects that do not benefit local communities, political or religious organisations, state or privately run schools except special needs, or hospitals except hospices. Supply copies of accounts as required by the Charities Commission or other financial details and details of your managing committee. To apply, the charity must be served by the Enfield Independent, the Harrow Times, the Hendon and Finchley Times, the Barnet and Potter's Bar Times, the Edgware and Mill Hill Times, the Boreham Wood and Elstree Times, or the Tottenham and Wood Green Independent. Email kelly.pels, that's P-E-L-L-S, at london.newsquest.co.uk by October the 16th. Okay, and so we've come to the end. <coughs> sorry, we've come to the end of side one. Please stop your machine, take out the cassette, turn it over, and start side two.